My name is Mark Hansen. Uh, my wife, Kate, and myself moved into this house about eight months ago. We have the geothermal uh, with 14 100 foot deep wells out in our backyard. We have a uh, GCT 024, which is a combo unit. It does radiant in floor, um, hot water heating, along with forced air heating and air conditioning. Uh, we're doing 100% of the domestic hot water with a high temperature unit. Uh, that was a early uh, decision in the design phase because in addition to the capability of powering it with electricity, we power it at an incredibly high efficiency level. You can't match the efficiency of a geothermal heat pump and it's quiet. You don't hear air piping through vents at 3 in the morning because there isn't piping through vents. It's heated up. The floor, the floor just radiates that heat up. Well, I want to welcome everybody to Comparing Residential Green Certifications. This is part four where we focus on credits. This course is approved for one hour in continuing education units as well as one hour in AIA HSW. Today I'll be a presenter. My name is Brett Little and I'm the executive director here at the Green Home Institute. Uh, this course is going to go over credits on the green rating systems, how they compare, how they weight, and kind of help you get some deciding factors on what you can choose uh, based on what you, your goals are and what your, what your client's goals are. So let's get started. All right, so as we were recording this series, we actually figured out that it's uh, better to break part or session four into two different parts. So um, this might be a little bit different than what you had saw in the first three sessions, but it's all the same uh, intention and concept. So uh, during this one, we're going to be talking uh, 4.1, and we're going to be focusing primarily on energy and health, which certainly take up a significant amount of time. And then in the next one, we're going to be covering uh, the credits in water, uh, materials, and place. Um, so if you look at the workbook that we gave you all, there is a tab we created called weightings, and this was sort of our attempt to determine how much uh, weight each credit has, how much point or how much a point weighs in each of the rating systems. And so you can look at our math on the chart. This was sort of just our best attempt at this. And one, one of the reasons we think this is important, because if you're saying, you know, I'm do, doing these 50 things that are green, um, how far are these things going to get me in each of the rating systems? Um, you can see that, you know, if you're going for lead, it gets you 2.5% of the way there. If you're going for certified, two for silver, you know, almost two for gold and, you know, almost just one for platinum. Um, same for national green building standard. You can see those thresholds because NGBS has way more points than lead uh, does as far as options and choices you can see that each of those points actually have typically less weight um, and that weight goes down even further as you try to get to a higher level. Um, and then enterprise green communities doesn't have thresholds, doesn't have levels. Um, basically you get 30 points to certify um, and then 35 points for uh, new constructions that certify. So, when you would be looking at enterprise, you might be asking, does your local uh, low income housing tax agency require you to hit a certain point threshold? Then these numbers might have more relevancy, but because that is so random, uh, we don't know what all those numbers are. We just said, look, here is, here's what it is to get to certified. And so you can see with enterprise, the points weigh a lot more than most of the other rating systems. And that's because there's way less points and way more requirements in enterprise. And then you can see the same, we tried to do our best to weight it out. So again, if you're looking at a credit like uh, energy recovery ventilators and it says you get two points in lead, you know that would be, when you're trying to get to lead silver or NGBS emerald, you could easily see that, wow, this gets me 4% in lead, but it only gets me so far in national green building standard. Um, so again, that's for you to decide if it's useful uh, again, it's only weighting the points. It's not telling you how much the points cost to install, how hard they are to get. Um, those are all decisions that you're going to have to make with your team. All right, so our first pillar of green is energy. And this is blown up a little bit, but um, 
This is a chart we took from the handout there called Energy. It's at the top. And so it looks a lot nicer if you're looking at the, if you're looking at the handout. But what it is is it's basically got all of the systems and the codes. So 2009, 2012, we didn't get 15 in here, but it's pretty close to 12. And then it has um, all of the HERS index ratings. So this is only for low rise. Uh, but again, remember low rise, if you remember from our previous courses, that can go up to, um, you know, that can go up to uh, uh, six stories or beyond in some cases. So again, these are the HERS index ratings you're typically going to need to see for each of these programs. And then the next thing is most rating systems use envelope commissioning. Um, oh, wait, there's 2015 there. So, okay, bonus. Um, and so, and then stacking on top of that, some use HVAC commissioning, some use credentialed HVAC, uh, and then some get into solar ready design, hot water commissioning, ducts, and energy recovery and thermal bridge free. So again, this is just for you to take a look and say, yeah, what are we planning to do? What HERS rating are we planning to do? What kind of commissioning do we want to do? What's our budget look like? And then just from an energy standpoint, you might be able to look at this chart and hopefully make some more, uh, more informed decisions for your project. Okay, so when it comes to uh, energy pathways, um, we covered a lot in the last session uh, because a lot of the energy is covered as prerequisites. Um, and so a lot of it's performance based, but some rating systems allow you to do performance plus, uh, plus a little bit of a prescriptive approach when they feel that some items aren't being uh, either missing from the energy models or not accurately calculated in those energy models. Um, so efficient hot water distribution, uh, this is circulation pumps that do not operate continuously. They're on timers, water sensors, uh, they're demand activated with switches, motion sensors, flow switches, door switches, or even voice command we've been seeing. And they need to start at certain um, temperature rises, not more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit above the initial temperature of the water in the pipe. And they have control limit on water temperature to a maximum of 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so these are kind of just uh, uh, some of the different things you'll be looking at. Each rating system has a different way of wording it on what they're looking for. It gets pretty detailed. And I'll tell you right now, here where we do a lot of our projects, to be honest, hot water is such a small part of the energy efficiency that you'll notice in the models it barely makes a dent in the changes. So the other thing to look at is reduced pipe length. So a lot of these rating systems will give you credit based on um, how long the pipes are and how wide they are. And so reducing that um, or using heat traced pipe servicing single units uh, all can get you credit. Uh, volume or temperature water source terminations, doing testing on the pipes, or to be quite honest, the one we always see, wrap the pipes to R4, call it a day. And, and that's you know an easier, maybe cheaper way to approach the solution. So. The way we're going to be doing this is that you'll see um, this type of uh, solution is weighted low in these rating systems, um, and then weighted middle. And then here at the top, when it says weighted high, that means it's either worth a lot of credits, or it's um, or it's worth a lot of points, or it's mandatory. So in these cases, these are mandatory, and you can see in lead, this is kind of a little bit higher weight weighted as far as credits in the other two rating systems. Advanced utility tracking. So LEED is looking for a permanent energy modeling, monitoring system that records at intervals of one hour or less and has been installed. The house has an automatic in-ground irrigation system and landscape irrigated area larger than 1,000 square feet and has installed a submeter to monitor all the irrigation system components. Or you can use a third-party system uh, like WagoWise and like what we just found out today, um, your um, developer or team leader might be using um, Energy Star Portfolio Manager to track all that and score the building out in Energy Star later. The Enterprise Green Communities Program makes this a mandatory measure, and that is 100% owner paid utility accounts must be reported to certify, or 15% of tenant paid utility accounts at the bare minimum. If you want to snag some more points in the rating system, you're looking at anywhere between 15% to 60% of the tenants uh, or 61% to 100% of the tenants individually metered uh, reporting out to, to get those points. 
And then for National Green Building Standard, it's a little bit less uh, strict. It's number one, you get points for programmable communicating thermostats. You get more points for energy monitoring device, pretty broad. And then even more points, four points, if you do an energy management control system where you can kind of control the energy in the house. Um, for the most part, LEED and even EGC don't uh, don't look at those um, don't look at those items. Solar ready design um, for enterprise green communities. This is worth four points, um, pretty big. What we're kind of looking at here is minimum required south facing exposure, um, and single family and multifamily all have different ways of approaching this. Um, but uh, but what you're but what you're looking at is having enough square feet of unobstructed space, so not shaded. We had someone ask us once, "Hey, you know the the, the house is facing south, but there's trees covering it. Do I still get that?" I'm like, "No. I mean, it defeats the whole purpose." So, you know, make sure that it's um, there are very specific details you need to follow by following the EPA's guidance on this. They have a whole uh, guidance program, and most of these rating systems pretty much all follow the EPA guidance. Living building, of course, um, is a little more broad in their approach to how, how you have to do that. Oh, and then some of these um, have to demonstrate that the life will last at least, the roof, the roof life will last more than 20 years. Um, credentialing heating and cooling contractors. So um, LEED actually, um, it doesn't really say this unless you look into the details, but LEED does accept NATE or Energy Star HQUIDO. At this point in time, I think NATE is a lot more, uh, a lot more well known, a lot more used for HVAC credentials. Uh, I think it's cost less than HQUIDO from the EPA as well. Uh, the only downside is if you're not HQUIDO, you can't get Energy Star certified. So that, you know, that's the downside. Uh, National Green Building Standard is actually going to accept an HVAC who are those two along with being Building Performance Institute or the Radiant Panel Association. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that's good to hear. And then for here, these all require H. Guido's Enterprise requires it definitely on new construction, um, but not on um, renovations. Okay, so again, that was um, prescriptive um, plus performance. Some of these other rating systems have uh, a bunch of other energy credits that uh, that LEED doesn't have, uh, Green Star, Green Globes, and Home Innovation. So occupancy sensors, induction cooktops, always a great idea this day and age, uh, better skylights, buying green energy, using smart appliances that can shut down or communicate, um, and, uh, NGBS has a whole list of ways you can score for smart appliances. Uh, having your hood and bath exhaust directly through the ERV uh, is uh, an innovative cr uh, credit that's called out in Green Star. And NGBS, interestingly enough, in this additional points area down way at the bottom of the checklist of Chapter 7, you actually are required to claim two points there. Um, so you've got to think through uh, some of these things. Um, you know, I always say occupancy sensors. Again, you know, why if you walk out of a room and you're gone for a minute, why should the light still be on? It's just such a waste and the prices are coming down so much. So I think that's an easy one to snag those two points, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so prescriptive pathway. Um, you know, the, the reality is, is we're seeing a more and more rating systems move away from allowing the prescriptive pathway and going uh, directly to uh, the, the, the performance pathway. Um, and so, uh, you know, you're going to start seeing that. And, and in this case, um, the prescriptive pathway we're talking about today does not include Enterprise Green, does not include Lead Midrise, does not include Green Star, DOE, or Pathopops, just these two rating systems for now. And so, uh, simple one, um, based on your home and unit size, um, if you uh, have, again, more square footage uh, and less bedrooms, you're penalized. Less square footage, more bedrooms, you are, you are rewarded. So here's how those are kind of weighted um, in these different rating systems. Do notice that National Green Building Standard actually doesn't care about that. And Living Building actually has cutoffs of like 4,200. And after that, you, you just are kicked out of the program without a waiver. Um, for passive solar, um, all of these programs 
all have different approaches, but they're all sort of basic concepts are the same. And so that's, um, and I'm going to use our climate zone, the more colder northern climate zone as an example. Um, but that's talking about, you know, more glazing on the south. Um, that's uh, got ample um, overhangs to protect the the house from overheating in the summer and for getting the solar in in the winter, you know, having way less glazing on the north. Um, and that's, you know, ha that's pretty much the case of it. And, and in the south side of the country, you know, you're going to be looking at really high um, uh, or improved solar heat gain coefficients. Um, but again, you're going to obviously want that solar not getting into the home and definitely not overheating it. Um, and so they all have different approaches, but here's kind of how they're weighted in the rating system. Um, blower door testing gets fairly convoluted in these programs. So, and I kind of have them listed from, you know, more, less stringent to more stringent, um, except for green globes, which I'll get to in a second. So you can see uh, um, for NGBS, you can actually do a visual inspection in lieu of doing a blower door test. Um, or you can do seven air changes per hour at 50 for five points, or you can snag six to 17 more points. And this is in zone four only I'm referencing. So this changes per zone, climate zone, if you can snag an ACH of a, a five to one or one to five. Um, lead from climate zone three to seven, you can do uh, 2.75 to 3.5 air changes per hour um, for one point or 2.5 to two for two points. Um, DOE zero energy ready in climate zone three to five, you could do, you are pretty much having to hit this target threshold here. Passive house uses a little bit of a different number that lead and even green star are moving towards, which is um, CFM at 50 per square foot of envelope um, or 0 0.08, a um, little bit, little bit less stringent there on five plus stories with no combustion, um, which he, so passive house used to just be a flat 0.6 air changes per hour at 50. Now they've moved to a, um, a more uh, robust <clears throat> way of measuring that. And, and, and part of that reason is simply because um, uh, large multi or, uh, larger homes actually are easier to get to lower numbers. And so they were penalizing smaller homes. And then here's the math that Green Globes wants you to do. And I'm not a building science professional. So I am not going to pretend to understand that. Walls, uh, thermal envelope. So let's take a look at that. Um, insulation quality rating. So what your energy rater is going to come in and do is going to give you an installation, ins insulation, installation, say that 10 times fast, quality rating. One is the best, two is OK, three is the worst. Um, so for home innovations, uh, must be a one rating to get wall assembly points. Um, and grade two for four points um, and grade one for seven points. So you actually can't go above the bronze certification level if you don't have grade one insulation. Uh, for lead, must be one to score any wall points. So they're just flat out. And for these programs, all must be rated one um, to score any points um, in, the, in the quality rating. And I will tell you this, um, fiberglass more often than not cannot breach past to the level th one rating without uh, our very meticulous um, quality assurance. So take that for what it's will, uh, what it's worth. So in your workbooks in the checklist, you'll see a tab called energy, and underneath that uh, prescript that sort of uh, all those logos, um, you'll see we've devised for you. Um, unfortunately, we just focused on climate zone five here, which is a big part of the country. Um, it would have just taken a lot of work to get all the climate zones in. But you'll see, you know, what, from a prescriptive standpoint, where IECC 2009 is in climate zone 5, 12, or 15, as far as your R values need to be in all of these different areas. And then you'll see how that compares to LEED to get two points. And then you'll see how that compares to National Green Building Standard to get seven points, 11 points, 16, or 18. So you can see lead is more just straightforward on the points. And then NGBS um, kind of floats around at all these different levels. The other thing you'll notice about National Green Building Standard is they have um, specific points for, for wall thickness uh, or for mass walls, whereas lead does not, uh, does not specify that. Um, 
one thing I want to point out about NGBS that's pretty cool about the checklist is once you identify your climate zone, it eliminates all of the other things you have to think about. So you can say you're in zone one, two, four, five, whatever. And then it tells you where you need to be. Whereas leads, you're going to have to do a bunch of digging and make sure you're looking at the right chart. All right, so let's get into mechanicals. Um, ducks in conditioned space, just do it, get it done. Don't put them in an unconditioned space. Um, but if you're taking the pre prerequisites, uh, prescriptive pathway, three points, envelope must be airtight, lowest HCH must be achieved in lead to get these points. Uh, for National Green Building Standard, there's four points and then one point if you, uh, if you test them. And then for Green Star, testing is in the performance pathway. Um, for LEED, um, it's very convoluted, but you can get up to two points in unconditioned space. Uh, for larger homes or multifamily units, um, for homes or multifamily units of 12,000 square feet or under, limit the rate of duct air leakage to outside the condition envelope. For each installed system, the tested duct leakage rate must not exceed 3.0 at CFM at 25 pascals for 100 square feet of conditioned floor area verified by the energy rater. And then you have to have the heating and cooling distribution systems well thought out as all. Well. Uh, for small homes or multifamily units, um, oh, that's a repeat there. So for national green building standards, you can get two points for half of them in, half of them out and three points again if they're all in condition space. And then the uh, the entire central HVAC duct system, including the air handle and register boot, is tested by a third party for total leakage at differential of 0.1 inches WG25 Pascal at maximum air leakage is equal to or less 6% of the system design flow rates uh, to get that credit when testing. All right, if you have no ducts, you can pick up two to three points from LEED for an additional point and install an outdoor reset control that modulates distribution water temperatures based on the outdoor air temperature. Um, you can snag all the points for using mini splits. For National Green Building Standard, you can snag six points. For Green Star, this is all done through performance. Um, and so here again, you can see uh, LEED does not use um, SEER ratings or AFUE or COP or you name it um, per climate zone. They just have straight, full-blown, if you're doing an air source heat pump, if you're doing a gas furnace, a boiler, a ground source, whatever, here's how you get your one point, here's how you get your two. We don't care what climate zone you're in. However, on um, National Green Building Standard, again, you select your climate zone at the beginning of the project and then they're going to tell you how many points you get and so you can see you have a lot more thresholds um, you can snag a lot more points for having um, less efficient systems than you can in lead which has just uh, sort of two thresholds you have a lot more uh, choice in national green building standard for some of these different um, programs and so there was a question what is the purpose of duct pressure testing when you're in condition space um, so when, yeah, once you get into in condition space, um, you're really kind of just throwing a lot of money at nothing. But if you're getting really picky and you've got uh, occupants who like to be really comfortable, uh, you know, air, what, what mostly ends up happening is you've got duct leakage happening that's going into a conditioned attic or a, a conditioned or unintentionally conditioned basement. Uh, and so we've had people who sealed their ducts in those cases um and then you know they're they're much more comfortable um because that air is getting distributed um to where they're at so we're kind of talking about renovations in that case you know new homes you're probably making it tight enough um but there are some utilities that require this and there are some um uh rebates that even require duct testing in condition space all right water heating uh so again Leads doing the same thing here, looking at energy factor, first hour ratings, warranties even, and even safety standards. Um, and they are, uh, again, rewarding points, primarily just based on a couple different thresholds, and they're not caring about the climate zone. Uh, whereas um, National Green Building Standard, um, 
is not looking at warranties, not looking at safety ratings in the prescriptive pathway. I think there's some extra points for it though otherwise. Uh, but they are looking at different point thresholds um, per climate zone, depending on how you are heating water. Also, they have a thing for D superheaters, uh, which LEED does not. So if you're using geothermal and LEED, um, probably wasting, you know, you're probably missing out a lot of points um, if you don't go performance. And windows. So um, here's the breakdown of windows. Here we go through IECC uh, 2009, 12, and 15 in zone five. These are U values. Remember, U value is the inverse of R value. So lower is better. Um, so we've got fenestration. These are doors and windows. We've got skylights. And then we've got solar heat gain coefficients, which typically we don't care about in zone four or higher, unless we're getting really picky or trying to go really passive solar. So lead breaks it down again. Um, doesn't care about climate zone, uh, 1.5 or three points. Um, or oh, I'm sorry, LEED does actually look at climate zone. So this is pulled right from zone five. Um, and then here is uh, here is the Home Innovations Lab looking at sort of uh, our mandatory level. So they actually have mandatory ones you have to hit in prescriptive, unlike LEED. And then five, eight, or nine points, depending on those U values. And then Passive House has um, some uh, values of 0.4 to 0 0.08 BTU per hour feet at Fahrenheit, and it varies by climate. So they get very prescriptive on that. And there, um, if there is a way to compare that to U value, I don't know how, so forgive me. <laughs> and lighting. Um, so lighting is going to be taking a look at a lot of different things. Um, Home Innovation wants to see Energy Star equivalent on 75% of bulbs for three points, 95% of bulbs for four points, 80% of outdoor lighting at less than 40 lumens per watt for one point, and they really don't like can lighting, so get rid of that and you get a point, um, which will also help your blower door testing unless it's sealed right. Um, Leads looking at um, these sort of watts per square feet um, on single family and then multifamily they're just sort of looking at um, percentage of efficient lighting in general um, within the unit for your number of points. Uh, lead rewards um, more points for having more Energy Star appliances, but does not require it. Refrigerators are actually worth two points in lead. And while this is not called out in lead, it is in Green Star, um, you do get more points for having up, down, so uh, on the top or the bottom, put the freezer rather than doing side by side, because that's going to save way more energy, even if it's Energy Star. Uh, also lead rewards for ceiling fans and dishwashers. Uh, National Green Building Standard, on the other hand, gives six points um, um, for Energy Star appliances. Um, they give a little more points for, for clothes washers, dishwashers, and washer machines uh, compared to lead. And these are all required in enterprise. Hmm. Renewable energy lead is one point for every 500 kilowatt hours modeled up to four points, one bonus point if it's over 250 kilowatt hours. And then you can snag another point for carbon offsets through the ID credit, um, innovation and design. National green building standard is one point for less than half from renewables, five points for more than half of your total energy um, coming from renew renewables, and then bonus one point if the builder uses renewables while they're building the house to power everything. Um, Enterprise Green Communities, this is the one time it falls into a prescriptive pathway, otherwise it doesn't. And if you can produce 5 to 40% of your energy contingent on the building's height, and that's also contingent on whether it's square, if it's single family or multifamily, uh, so there's a lot of variables there that I don't want to get into here. Uh, you can get two to 10 more points. And then for green globes, you can get one point for planning for renewables, just having a plan, 0.5 for on-site generation, 0.5 for an energy meter that reports solar, just tells you what the solar is doing, which I don't know who wouldn't do that. And then nine points to have a renewable feasibility study. Um, and then up to 18 points for bar buying carbon offsets that make up 40% or more of the emissions of the building. 
So they're a little bit uh, less stringent, we should say. All right, so this just kind of came out, but lead version 4.1 is launching. It'll go through public comment. It is available to use now. It's in your handouts on box.com. And like I said, um, these programs are trending away from the prescriptive pathway. So assuming public comment goes the way um, everybody hopes it does, lead will actually get rid of its prescriptive pathway, it looks like, and so NGBS will be the only one left. Hmm. So let's look at our uh, case studies. Um, so we've got our Madison Supportive Housing Mid-Rise. Uh, nearly all of the energy points, 25% above ASHRAE 90.1, um, 16.5 points added for home size bedroom ratio um, because it's, again, efficiency units, so it's zero bedrooms. They used advanced um, utility tracking, and there, there is no credit available for a credentialed HVAC in Mid-Rise, otherwise they would have gotten it. For any for enterprise, they got 28 energy points out of only 30 needed to certify. So that's 30 total points. So energy pretty much got them all the way there. Maxed them all out. They got zero energy ready points. They got solar ready points. And then for National Green Building Standard, they were 141 points in energy alone. That's 41 above what's needed for the Emerald highest tier. Our Midwest Energy Moderate Rehab. So this is very unique. Um, this is um, what the building looks like before. So cost of heating, cooling, water heating, energy for lighting, appliances. Uh, actually, appliances are just lumped into lighting here. And then cost of what it's going to be after. And then here's the percent reduction. And then the level achieved only in energy. So you can see here are 15% for bronze, 25% for silver. And so you can see, you know, if you were to decrease your square footage, if you were to increase it, that could impact the numbers. So again, this is very unique compared to all the other green systems. Those are looking at comparing themselves to some sort of other energy baseline, whereas NGBS is comparing the building to itself. Um, so for this project, we used REM design to model all this out, didn't even use a full HERS rating to do it. And we're able to come up with all these details based on what the building you know, take a picture of what the building looks like before, and then, you know, take make plans on what the building looks like after. All right, so our urban infill single family gut rehab, which is LEED Gold certified, remember, they got uh, 28 points out of 38 available, a 51 HERS index. Uh, okay points based on home size and bedroom ratio. Remember, you can lose points if that ratio is not good. Wrap their hot water pipe and had the HVAC had a credential. For enterprise, they would have maxed out all 12, 12 energy points in reduction, um, which makes up a third of the points they would have needed to certify the program. Um, and then for National Green Building Standard, um, they were five points above what was needed for Emerald. Again, these are all just theoretical. They did not actually certify to any of those things. Um, our Detroit Mid-Rise, um, substantial renovation, multifamily, eight-story renovation. Um, this is on, its, on track for Enterprise Green Community Certification, nine out of 12 energy points, based on a 10% better than ASPRAE 90.1 2010 modeling. For NGVS, they met bronze, but they are 10 points shy of silver, which would disqualify them for the local tax credit they were trying to pursue. And for LEED, they're at 9.5 points based only on their bedroom to square feet ratio. They would have scored zero points and disqualified because they don't have enough uh, savings in their energy. Uh, because they didn't follow the Energy Star multifamily high rise protocol, should I say. And then our market rate home sweet home new construction suburban home, um, 36 out of 38 points negative 49 on the HERS index, 176 less, uh, uses 176 less percent energy than the lead reference home. Uh, interestingly, the only points they didn't get is the advanced hot water, because again, where they're located, it would have just been a lot of work, a lot of money for barely any energy savings. I mean, look at what they're already doing. And remember, this is our zero energy hero or, um, or um, homeowner. So they've actually achieved uh, zero energy on their cars and on their, um, both on their cars and on their house. Um, and then they got ID credits for surpassing that. They were 33 points above what they needed 
to get Home Innovations Lab Emerald. So again, interestingly enough, two, two points off in lead, 33 over in NGBS for energy. And they are pending the zero energy certification from the International Living Future Institute any minute here. Okay, so moving on to health. And remember, health is sort of an expanded concept to include more than indoor air quality. It looks at mental health, accessibility, physical health, and biophilia now. So uh, balanced ventilation, so that's basically just ensuring that you're not just using a supply or exhaust only strategy, but that you've got as much air coming into the house, whether it's through an ERV or HRV that you have leaving, and then testing for that as well. So you can kind of see how that's weighted, and obviously it's required in these programs. Mm. So for commit contaminant control, we're talking about walk-off mats, shoe removal storage. So believe it or not, we get laughed at all the time, but you got a kid coming into your house, crawling around on the floor, and you got people coming in, dragging stuff in, especially in carpets with their dirty shoes, toxins, bacteria, baby puts it in their mouth, you know, can have an impact for the rest of their life. So we get laughed at all the time for the shoe removal, but it's really to protect kids and it's an easy thing to design in. Uh, along with the walk-off mats. Pre-occupancy flush to ensure that, you know, that new car smell, that's nasty, you don't like it, you don't want the new home smell either. And then air quality testing. Uh, so again, those kind of, here's how some of those things are weighted differently, combined uh, in these rating systems, and for the most part required in these rating systems. Um, balance pressure testing, room by room zoning. So um, a lot of people don't go for these credits. Um, they get pretty in-depth. Um, most of the rating systems actually either don't even care about this um, or they pretty much weight them, um, you know, fairly, uh, fairly, uh, fairly evenly. But this is sort of a advanced level that if you want for a client who wants to have comfort, uh, maximum comfort, uh, this can be done <clears throat> and can be rewarded. Uh, ceiling between units. Um, so LEED and Green Star both want our multifamily and single family attached to be um, equal to uh, or less than 15 um, uh, at CFM 50 per square foot, um, along with some actual um, prescriptive measures as well. Um, the rest of these programs, believe it or not, don't even give you any points for any of that. Um, if you have no fireplace or it's an EPA certified fireplace, um, you can see that's required in these programs. Living building only allows fireplaces in certain rural areas. Um, otherwise, there's no combustion whatsoever. And then these programs, you know, kind of weighted pretty high, especially if you can just avoid the fireplace, you just get free credit. Um, so for garages, we're looking at an exhaust fan that is installed in the garage and is rated at least 75 CFM. Uh, the fan meets Energy Star with performance requirements. It exhausts directly the outdoors, has an automatic timer control link to an occupant sensor, a light switch, or garage door opening and closing mechanism, or has a carbon monoxide sensor on it that goes off when CO levels reach 35 parts per million or equivalent. Um, or at least, and then also that it has an automatic timer set to provide at least three air changes each time the fan is turned on. So that's kind of a lead requirement, but it's kind of unanimous across the, the systems. Uh, for DOE or FIAS, you can do pressure testing in the garage, and if it's not getting sucked into the house, you don't have to do exhaust. Uh, green globes only ask for isolation and CO detectors. Uh, lead multifamily gets pretty in-depth. Um, you know, it's looking at following the 62.1 ASHRAE 2010 garage ventilation requirements, um, you know, negative pressure on the adjacent spaces, self-closing doors, deck-to-deck -deck penetration, partitions for hard lid ceilings that have been installed, and again, you know, reaching those CO2 levels of 35 parts per million. Um, so again, that gets pretty in-depth on that. And then, of course, you could just detach or remove the garage entirely. Uh, or not having a garage or do a carport and then not have to worry about um, those problems. 
Um, so for the most part, we're looking for insulation that complies with California standards. Um, you can get uh, uh, Green Guard Gold School certified. Even Spray Foam is getting that certification now. And you can use that to pick up credit and uh, in the rating system. I'd say overall, you won't be able to certify to LBC and you'll fail the air quality testing if you don't do this. Eliminating combustion. Um, Enterprise Green Communities gives you nine points for no gas cooking in the units and 11 points if the HVAC and water heating are completely free of combustion. No combustion in living building, um, passive house, that shouldn't be there, but that's you know ideal for a passive house. Um, and then Green Star is gonna give you points for um, no combustion as well. Um, asthmagetic and multiple chemical sensitivity free materials with an asterisk because um, you know there's not as much science out there to prove that it is going to be free uh, because MS, MCS is such a um, subjective term on people how they react to chemicals but at least getting closer so do not install products that contain ingredients known to cause asthma triggers, um, insulation, don't use any spray foam, so no spray foam, no formaldehyde containing fiberglass pads. Flooring, do not use PVC or sheet roll flooring or carpet back with vinyl or phthalates. Do not use fluid applied finished floors. For wall coverings, do not use wallpapers made with vinyl PVCs, phthalates, or site applied high performance coatings that are epoxy or poly polyurethane. And composite wood, use only ULEF products or cabinetry, subflooring, or other interior composites. So again, asthma is on the rise. Multiple chemical sensitivity, while it's not necessarily diagnosed by a majority of doctors, is on the rise. And there are simple things you can do in the design phase to help your clients. All right, um, getting away from air quality health for a little bit, we're looking at um, going uh, beyond ADA to universal design and zero step design, uh, design a minimum of 15% of the dwelling units, no fewer than one, in accordance with IECC ANSI A117.1 type A, fully accessible guidelines, design the remaining ground floor units and elevator reachable units in accordance with IECC blah, blah, blah type B. So that's for multifamily. For single family, we actually use the Kent County Disability Advocates zero step certification program it's an ID credit in LEED. Um, it's rewarded in Green Star, and it's actually going to be built into the Green Star checklist as um, a pathway moving forward because we believe that um, a green home isn't green unless it's fully accessible to all. And Enterprise and Home Innovation Labs are making some great strides on this. You can check them out for that as well. It's really becoming very important. Um, indoor Indoor and outdoor activity for children and adults provide an on-site dedicated recreation space with exercise or play opportunities for adults or children that is open and accessible to all residents. So that's looked at in EGC, pretty much implied in living building. Um, and so Green Star was the first and still one of the only major rating systems that actually gives credits, there's no requirements, um, for reducing exposure to electromagnetic frequencies. And this was actually put in place years ago and um, sort of version two of the EMF following the new guidelines of the future. Um, we're working with some building biologists to be launching the EMF reduction strategies here soon. So if you have clients that are concerned about that, there are strategies in this program to, um, to, uh, to guide you. Hmm. Oh, and so there was a question on uh, the zero step checklist. Um, yeah, you know what? I, uh, I'm going to make a note here and I will put the zero step checklist in the uh, box folder. So you will all have that. And those of you listening to this on demand, that will be there for you. Good, good question. Yes, I will do that for you. All right, case studies and health. Um, Madison supportive new construction. We've got 13.5 out of 18 health indoor air quality credits. Um, one thing interesting is they got points in every single area and a big focus on ventilation and they went for the full blown balancing credits. Um, for enterprise, they got a lot, this is a lot of points 
for most programs we see is health. Nearly half of what you need to certify. Um, because they eliminated combustions in the units, not the whole building, didn't quite get there that time. They have no smoking and they implemented a advanced universal design. For National Green Building Standard, they're four points over the required level um, for emerald in their, um, in their health points. The Midwest Moderate Rehab, we're looking at 32 points in National Green Building Standard renovation. Building to test above far five air changes per hour, which is pretty high. Um, and so because of that, they were able to install bath fans that are Energy Star certified that are pre-wired to be able to do um, a exhaust only strategy in the future if they ever air seal the building a little bit more and need that makeup air. They have duct free design and no smoking. Um, again, they did not certify to lead, so this is just made up, but it looks like they would have gotten 27 out of the 34 um, points in, uh, in health. Um, wow, this is the wrong one for this. So yeah, this is the wrong one. I apologize. Ignore this. Uh, I believe they actually, they definitely um, failed health and didn't get many points in the health area. Um, for enterprise, they got, would have gotten 14 points in health, but would have failed the ventilation at rate 62.2 um, prerequisites, as well as hood range um, ventilation they would have failed, so they wouldn't be able to get to that. All right, so for uh, indoor air quality on our urban infill single family gut rehab uh, under LEED, which it did certify to under uh, 10.5 out of 16 points, uh, again, we got the indoor air plus uh, certification, which just totally knocked out all the prerequisites and also um, gave them a significant amount of points. But it just goes to show that there's still nearly five and a half points shy of all of the inner, or air quality points uh, despite getting that indoor air plus. So there are more things in lead and that's one thing we really want to highlight. So, you know, they did a lot with contaminant control um, so that, um, you know, keeping uh, uh, shoes off uh, in the entryway, um, walk off mats, um, uh, uh, preoccupancy flushing, and then they did an energy recovery ventilator, which is not required in Indoor Air Plus, but ensures that balanced ventilation, which also improves energy efficiency. And then they had healthier materials, which to some degree is an Indoor Air Plus, but more certified materials that uh, ensure uh, lower air quality issues uh, in the first place. And then with Enterprise Green Communities, they got 12 points for following, uh, um, for gut rehab, substantial rehabs following basically all of the um, ventilation requirements, ASHRAE 62.2, hood range, bath fans. And then a National Green Building Standard, they got 113 points, which was six points over the Emerald highest level requirements. And one thing interesting to point out here is that, uh, is that uh, Indoor Air Plus does require APA uh, 1 and 2 wood, uh, so that was covered, which is pretty unique, again, in the Home Innovations and Green Star Certification Program. It is also covered in the Indoor Plus and must be uh, reviewed. Um, for the Detroit Mid-Rise Substantial Rehab, um, they got a lot of points, 12 points, which is, again, a third of what they need for having best ventilation strategies in Enterprise Green. Um, for National Green Building Standard, theoretically, they were 11 points shy of hitting Emerald, which is great. And for LEED, they were 8 of 18 points in indoor air quality. Um, but they did not plan to do compartmentalization, board, or testing, so they don't know how tight their units are, so they would definitely fail there. And they focused on en enhanced ventilation and low emitting materials for LEED purposes, again, all theoretical, and, and this project would fail LEED. And for our market rate new construction home sweet home, 13.5 out of 16. All categories have a lot of points in them. and. Uh, uh, National Green Building Standard, um, they have 28 points theoretically over Emerald if they were to pursue that. All right, so this is the end, and we are uh, session two of four, and we're going to be wrapping up where we focus on the credits and points available for water materials and place across the green rating systems. And again, we just want to thank all of you for attending today. Uh, we certainly couldn't do it without you. We couldn't do it without our sponsors, our board of directors, our volunteers, 
uh, geothermal comfort systems, uh, serve smart ventilation, sun intuitive self tinting glass, Niagara conservation, lowest flowing toilets on the planet, Panasonic ventilation, check them out for all your ventilation needs, and certainty air renew formaldehyde eating drywall. Uh, for those of you watching this on demand, make sure to complete your 10 question quiz with an 80% passing rate to pick up your continuing education. And thank you again.